This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and good to see you here with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is six o'clock and coming up this morning, a return to football means a lot of local high schoolers are excited. How Oregon players are getting back on the field this week with COVID restrictions in place. Plus, we've shown how people in larger counties are scheduling their COVID-19 vaccine appointments, right? But what about the smaller counties? We're going to look at how they're handling this too. But first, Chris McGinnis joins us live at home with the forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Galen. Off to a little bit of a wet start this morning. Not terribly wet, but as we check out the radar here, we've got a little smattering of green working its way through southwest Washington, northwest Oregon. Snow levels in the Cascades uh, generally around 2,500 feet or so. There'll be a little fresh dusting up on the ski slopes this morning, but I think the lion's share of the rain, at least for today, falls this morning, and our trend should be to dry things out here mid to late morning. All right, right now, we're waking up to 42 degrees at PDX with a light southeast breeze, and the plan for today, sun up at about 639 or so. I keep the shower chance in our forecast throughout the day, and the best bet for that gallon will probably be A this morning, and then secondarily, probably sometime three, four, five o'clock this afternoon. Most of our Saturday, though, is, is generally dry but fairly cloudy, with highs getting into the lower 50s. We've got another front that comes through tonight that brings us more steady rain, and we could have some thunder in the forecast, and maybe some hail, and all that fun stuff uh, as we go into Sunday. We'll take a closer look at that coming up with your full seven-day forecast in just a little bit. Wow, action-packed. Chris, thank you. Oregon's governor is ordering all public schools to start in-person learning for any student who wants to back in the classroom. Here's our timeline here. By March 29th, every district needs to have in-person learning for kindergarten through fifth grade. By April 19th, sixth through twelfth graders need to be back in the classroom. And the governor argued the return to class will be safe since the state prioritized teachers for vaccines. There will also be a statewide rapid testing system for anyone who might get sick. And $500 million from the federal government will help put more safety measures in schools. Parents have mixed reactions. I am not against schools opening back up. I, you know, and being full in person, I, as long as everything is done safely. Until their children are back in school five days a week, full time, uh, or at least have that option, we're not going to celebrate. Now, if parents want to keep kids at home, online learning will still continue and districts will have the flexibility to go back to online only if the virus flares up in a community. Well, high school football is back in Oregon. Our Mike Benner has a look at changes this season with COVID protocols in place. Ladies and gentlemen, if the bright lights across the metro area didn't give it away already, High school football is back in Oregon. Gladstone High kicked off its season against Estacada. Senior Ryan Lee will tell you the months long wait because of COVID was even longer for him. I've been waiting for my senior year of football since my third grade year of football. Lee could never have guessed his senior season would look like it does. Face coverings for everybody in the stadium, even the players on the field. Lots of signage to encourage mask wearing and social distancing. Extra benches on the sidelines so players can spread out. Not to mention COVID-19 symptom screening. Lee and his teammates are taking it all in stride. The fact that I'm able to go out there with all of my best lifelong friends and play football is, is really special. Even more special, Lee will get to play in front of loved ones, at least a couple. Juniors and seniors on Gladstone's team will get two tickets to each home game to give to family. But that's it, according to Gladstone Athletic Director Cody Aker. Everyone else watches from outside the stadium. Hopefully the, the communication's gone out and people have received it. Um, and we've also asked for them to be you know, considerate and respectful to, to what we're trying to accomplish. Aker cannot let the number of fans, players, coaches, and game personnel in the stadium exceed 150. But that won't look the same in every county. For instance, fans are prohibited in the high and extreme risk counties. See, safety is the priority for, for the students, for the coaches, for the officials, anybody involved in the event, making sure that they're following the mitigation protocols. Judging by this Ryan Lee interception, he and his teammates won't be letting any mitigation protocols get in their way of making lasting memories. This is more of a special senior year. It really helps me value what I usually took for granted. How profound. In Gladstone, Mike Benner for KGW News. 
We also have much more coming up at 630. Orlando Sanchez will be here with the season premiere of Friday Night Flights. Now with easing COVID restrictions, many Oregon restaurants and bars are reopening for indoor dining during all of this. And the governor says they won't have to abruptly shut down again if cases start going up. 31 of Oregon's 36 counties are no longer at extreme risk for COVID. Now extreme, as you probably remember, is the most dangerous category. And those risk levels determine restrictions. On Thursday, Governor Brown said if a county sees rising cases and hospitalizations, it'll have two weeks to get its numbers in check. It will not automatically have to go back to the tightest restrictions. A new vaccination site in Vancouver will now allow for 600 vaccinations a day. This latest site opened earlier yesterday morning in the Tower Mall parking lot there off of East Mill Plain Boulevard. It will be open four days a week, Friday, Saturday, Monday and Tuesday. You can go through the drive through or walk up, but you do need an appointment. I signed up as soon as they said you could sign up and I've been checking regularly and getting nothing and then on Tuesday, I got an email saying that I was eligible. They're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, I'm very happy that they could be here and that that Clark County got more dosage. Dr. Alan Melnick is the public health director with Clark County. He says they might add more days in the next couple weeks if more vaccines arrive. This morning, we're also getting a look at how people in Oregon's smaller counties are scheduling their COVID vaccinations. Catherine Cook checks in. Counties across Oregon are getting the COVID-19 vaccine to as many eligible people as possible. Their methods are often different than those used in larger metro areas. Well, as small of a county as we are, I think we're actually doing pretty good. Gordon McCraw is incident commander for Tillamook County's COVID-19 response. Rather than asking residents to spend hours online trying to schedule an appointment, Tillamook County is calling residents to schedule appointments by phone. They just have to register to get that call, either online or by phone, when their age group is eligible. Whenever somebody finds out they're getting the shot, they're actually uh, pretty excited. If I could stress anything, it's of course that you need to get on that list so that we know that you're ready for the vaccine. McCraw says Tillamook County's biggest challenge has been short notice for their weekly vaccine allotment, often learning on Friday how many doses they'll get Monday. That late in the week, it's kind of hard to set up for what you're going to do next week when you're not certain about just how much vaccine you're going to get. According to the Oregon Health Authority, 15.7% of Tillamook County has been vaccinated. In Hood River County, it's 16.6%. It feels good to finally be moving in a positive direction. Trish Elliott is director of the Hood River County Health Department. The county is sharing vaccine allotments with primary caregivers. They can schedule appointments with their local patients as they become available. And that's a win-win because it's a faster distribution than us just trying to do that uh, by ourselves. Hood River County is also offering mass vaccination clinics with appointments also scheduled by phone and email invitation. Their biggest win? Hundreds of willing volunteers. Their biggest challenge? The same as so many other counties. They want more vaccine. Feels like we're just getting little cookies here and there, you know, a vaccine. And so for us, the biggest challenge has been patiently waiting uh, to get enough vaccine to feel like we're really working at our capacity. A reflection of the same goal every county shares. To get as many people vaccinated as quick as we can so that, uh, as we say it, life can return to normal. Catherine Cook, KGW News. We've got an update now on another big story here. Portland's mayor is calling for an independent review into how a city commissioner got falsely accused of a hit and run. Police say a driver told them Commissioner Joanne Hardesty hit her car, then took off. Then an activist group that has been critical of Hardesty said someone leaked the police report to them. They put the unproven information on social media and it spread fast before police could come out Thursday afternoon to say Hardesty was ruled out as a suspect. The mayor said what happened to Commissioner Hardesty is wrong and unacceptable. It's a reflection of broader systemic racism and it must be addressed. We need to get the, to the bottom of it as soon as possible. No one should be subjected to false accusations publicly. Now our reporter Maggie Vespa got a deeper look into how that accusation spread so quickly and Hardesty's take on all of it. You can see that full report right now on the KGW YouTube page. Meanwhile, the Portland Police Bureau says more officers will focus on shootings. Eight officers will be added to the enhanced community safety team. 
They will work Friday and Saturday nights, specifically responding to shootings. Now, in the past two months, police report, uh, reported more than 170 shooting calls compared to 88 this time last year. And last year was an historically high year for gun violence at this time. Now, from the pandemic to protests and vandalism, businesses are, of course, struggling. But there's help on the way with some new grants for nearly two dozen business owners. Who's behind all of those donations and what the money could accomplish?